my current interest at the moment is first of all to think about how the, uh, different ideas of assessment and particularly the apparent conflict or the real conflict which many teachers experience between formative assessment and summative assessment and the conflict often is felt as formative assessment is good it's about our teaching and helping pupils and summative assessment is bad it's something we've got to do because people from outside demand that we produce results according to some outside system how do you reconcile those two are they completely different do they merge with one another? And that would involve, I think it has involved in my thinking, of thinking in which different stages of a piece of learning do you, in fact, bring in these two aspects. So that in planning a piece of teaching, you have to be clear about your purposes. What do you want to achieve? And if those purposes end up with some final certificate result for the pupils, uh, what do the questions and the methods used for that result tell you about the aims of your teaching? And if they tell you about aims you think are too narrow, then there's something very badly wrong with the system, which often happens. But then you have to plan activities which will engage pupils and get them into taking an active part in the classroom. Uh, so they're not just receiving things and putting their hands up to show who's right and who's not, but they're encouraged to say something. Uh, even some teachers we work with have said we don't want children putting their hands up. They talk about a question and then everybody should be prepared to answer and the teacher has to treat all the answers with respect. The wrong answers are useful because you start saying, well, why does somebody else disagree with that? And get them involved in a learning discussion. So what the teacher has to do is open up a learning discussion, encouraging children to take part, and get gradually steering it to achieve the aims. And it's that delicate task of combining clear statement of aims and then involving the people so that they become part of the exercise. And it's not just something done to them, is done something done partly by them. In so doing, they become better at the subject and become better at guiding their own learning. And then moving on to written work, which is a sort of review of what you've learnt, a piece of homework or a short test in the end of some classroom work. And there you do have to stand back a bit, particularly with a short test, sometimes of written work or other practical speaking and listening work. And that reflection, again, is in the area between formative and summative assessment. And the final summative assessment is a reflection on the whole thing. But above all, therefore, within that, there's learning through oral dialogue, there's learning through written work where you don't just get a mark for it, but you're given ideas about it by a teacher or by one another to improve its weaknesses. But the point is not you're good or you're bad, but you can do better by paying attention to these weaknesses. Everybody can, in that way, be improved. And their focus is on how do I get the pupil to understand or be more confident with this work, wherever they are, whether they're very good at it or weak. And then how do I help them to become better learners by getting them involved in learning through discussion and in learning through reflection on their work and taking advice to improve it. And in the end I say that most such thing as formative or summative assessment, there's only assessment, picking up information. How you use that assessment can make it formative or it can make it summative for taking decisions or it can be both. <laughs>